You're listening to the North Parkway Podcast, weekly talks designed to help you take the next step in your spiritual journey. You can learn more about our church at northparkway.org. And if these talks are helpful to you, consider using the link in the description to give. Your financial support helps us continue to make great content. All right, well, that's enough intro. Let's get to today's talk. So yesterday I finished doing the primary painting on the outside of my house. I still have to do the trim work, but I got all the walls done after uh, about two weeks of every spare moment spent doing this number back and forth. And I can tell you, it is a great feeling to finish something that you worked hard at, that you did yourself, and step off of the ladder and take a few steps back and look at it and say, I did that. Anybody else enjoy the, the pride of finishing a, an accomplishment, looking at it? Any do-it-yourselfers? You know, you, I'm not a big social media person. But some of you guys, man, your social media feed is full of, like, stuff that you knit. And people are like, wow, that's so beautiful. And you're like, yeah, I did that myself. And I love do-it-yourself projects. I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy. If there's a video for it on YouTube and they sell the tool at Harbor Freight, I can probably fix it. At the house, right? That's, I'm that guy. If I, I've never met an internet recipe that I couldn't reproduce and maybe kick it up a notch with a few extra spices. I've never met a piece of Ikea furniture that I couldn't improve and upgrade with one extra trip to Menards. I am a do-it-yourself guy. I love it. And if you're, if you're like me and you're prone to do things yourself, it's great, but it also comes with a pretty pronounced weakness. And if you love doing stuff yourself, you probably have the same weakness that I do. And that weakness is, I need to do stuff myself. I need to be the one managing the details. I need to be the one preparing for all the possible outcomes. I need to be the one fixing it. I need to be the one painting it myself or screwing the thing into the thing myself or building it myself or cooking it myself. I have a need to be in control of the situation so I know it's done right and I know that I can depend on this guy and that need can become one of life's heaviest burdens to bear and it's a burden that you weren't designed to carry and if you keep carrying it it's eventually going to wear you out it's part of this series that we've been working on called traveling light and we've been looking at this great book I want to take a minute to give credit where credit's due Max Lucado wrote a fantastic book read it a few years ago called traveling light this series is based on that book and in fact I'm going to take a couple of quotes straight from the pages uh, it's a fantastic book and I would recommend it to you if you would like you can just look up Traveling Light, Max Lucado on Amazon. If you're watching from home, there's a link where you can buy it there. If you'd like a print version, we bought a couple and we'll be glad to sell it to you at cost at the Connect Center. Uh, so if, if this stuff is helpful to you, uh, make sure to give Max uh, some business there. But Max, he, he pointed out this really great way to look at life's struggles. He says that life is a journey that we're on and, and we tend to pick up baggage along the way that we didn't intend to pick up. Things like grief or regret. Things like doubt or uh, loneliness. And, and we pick those things up and we carry them not realizing that God has offered to take our heavy burden and to give us something lighter instead. We can trade life's heavy stuff for his burden. And his burden is just like we talked about in communion. It's making the decision to serve him as Lord. Now the beautiful thing is that that trade-off is available to everybody. But we oftentimes don't realize the stuff we're carrying. And so week by week, we're taking a look at things that are in your life, things that you carry that you weren't designed for, and helping you to trade the heavy things for something that's light. Today I want to talk to you about the burden of self-reliance the burden that comes with the need to be the guy who's doing the stuff to be the girl who's taking care of the things and if you have fill in the blank notes I want you to pull those out and write this down and if you're at home maybe pull out something to write with because it'll help you remember that self-reliance is a good thing gone bad sort of like 
dandelions. I don't know if many of you guys have heard the story. Dandelions did not just accidentally start growing in the United States. Uh, some French uh, settlers brought it over from France because they love to grow dandelions and make them into tea. Uh, they eat them in salads. You say, eat dandelions. Actually, they're edible and they're healthy. They're full of nutrients. And it was a good thing until they started destroying everybody's yard. Uh, and uh, if you've ever tried to have a beautiful lawn and whoosh, dandelions, I kind of hate them. Okay? It was a good thing gone, gone bad. And, and let me show you the good thing first. There's something great about self-reliance because it's part of your design. See, humans, write this down. Humans were designed to have dominion. We were designed to have dominion in this world. God built us that way. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. God spoke, the Bible says, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible. Okay, you notice the, the design here? We built this whole planet full of animals. Now, let's build something that exists in this world but that reflects the nature of God. From the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them and said to them, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge. That's part of the design that we would step up to the plate and be go-getters and do stuff ourselves and lead and manage this planet. Uh, and I have more to say about that. But first, we have a very important element of our Father's Day service. It's time for bacon. Are we ready? Let's roll it. Just like when you're at the game, all of our guys in the room here... Put your hand up if you want, and uh, we have vendors that are here with fresh bacon for you in honor of dads. All right. Let's give it up for our bacon team. Thank you so much for the folks that cooked bacon for you. It smells good in here. I'm going to have to hurry up because uh, you all are going to be getting hungry now. Uh, also, I wanted to take a minute to uh, draw attention to these snazzy Cheez-It socks that I came here with today. Talked about Cheez-Its last Sunday, and I, I got a bunch of Cheez-It stuff. So I, I told the folks, I'm going to talk about Ferraris this week. And <laughs> Hey, see what happens. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. So now that, uh, now that you have a snack, let me come back to this thought, okay? You were designed, as a human, you were designed to take charge of situations. You were designed to manage things. You were designed to make important decisions. God created you that way. This, this Hebrew word that we see in that passage about dominion, it's rada. It means to dominate or to subject it's, it's this idea, okay, anybody, dog people? Any dog people in the room? Some of you guys? Okay, when, when you walk outside, when your dog, wah, 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 and you walk out and you say, no, and he, and he kind of rolls over, you know, he shows his belly and his tail's sort of wagging, okay? That's, that's you and human, and that's human nature interacting with the rest of the earth. You were, you were designed to be in charge of the thing. And there's an element of that that's really good that you need. The problem is that desire to be in charge was supposed to be in bounds. God created the whole planet. He made all of this stuff. And he said to the first man and woman, here's the deal, guys. I want you to be in charge of everything. I only have one exception. There's this one tree in the garden. I want you to leave that alone. That's not for you. Everything else you can have, leave this one tree, and it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I was talking with somebody this week. Let me just, just briefly kind of a mini version of unpack that. A lot of people struggle with that and said, why would God put a tree in the Garden of Eden that's evil if he knew there was a possibility that the, the man and the woman would eat it? It's like, why would he leave a loaded gun with toddlers? Like, why would he do that? It was, okay. A couple thoughts. One... The tree itself was not evil. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and it represents an important concept. 
it represents this idea that God created humanity and he said, right now, you are not wise enough to choose for yourself what is good and what's evil. You leave that to me. I'll give you bounds and you operate leadership within the bounds that I give you. It's like a parent who has a Hulu or Netflix or Disney or whatever video account. Any parents out there, you, you have one of these accounts and there's a kid section for that app anybody else have like a kid section okay all right it would be like if you gave your kid this tablet and you said everything that's in the kid section is safe and good and healthy for you all i need for you to do is not check this box that says adult section because there's stuff in there right now that you're not ready for it's not good for you well humanity had this drive to be in charge and here's what happened that want to be in control and to be in charge write this down the desire to be in charge it caused our downfall we messed stuff up because our ancestors were just like you and I are and I think if I had been living in the garden eventually I would have done the same thing I would have said well I love being in charge of all the other stuff but what about that tree I want that one too if you read the story and it's a great go and read that sometime it it wasn't that they just wanted to, to shake their fists at God it's that they they had this temptation well I can be like him I can be in charge of all of the stuff I can make all of my own decisions and I I believe it's personal opinion I believe that if they had waited I think there would have been a time where humanity was mature enough that God would have said okay now you're ready to eat this tree as well but they weren't ready yet they weren't ready to make wise decisions but we wanted to be in charge anyway and, and what happens is we live in a world of people who want to make all of the decisions and be in charge of all of the things, but intellectually, compared to the God who created us, we're sort of like toddlers walking around with a loaded gun. What could go wrong? Well, everything. I want to pull a direct quote from, uh, from Max's book. And uh, to give you an idea of how he writes, but I, I thought he summed it up well. All right, so we've been talking about Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and all of this. Uh, we have a tendency as humanity to want our own version of Psalm 23, and, and it goes something like this. He says, quote, I am my own shepherd. I am always in need. I stumble from mall to mall and shrink to shrink, seeking relief but never finding it. I creep through the valley of the shadow of death and fall apart. I fear everything from pesticides to power lines, and I'm starting to act like my mother. <laughs> That's the real scary part, right? Love you, Mom. Okay. He said it, not me. Max continues. He said, I go down to the weekly staff meeting, and I'm surrounded by enemies. I go home, and even my goldfish scowls at me. I anoint my headache with extra strength Tylenol. My Jack Daniels runneth over. Surely misery and misfortune will follow me and I will live in self-doubt for the rest of my lonely life. Whoo, that's bleak, isn't it? We're not like that. We're not making a mess of stuff. We've got it together, right? Right? I want to do a little I've got my stuff figured out poll. So let me read. I, I've got five things on the poll. And, uh, and if you could say yes to all five of these, then uh, you can lift your hand up and, and we'll give you applause, okay? Because you're awesome. I was going to say I'll give you more bacon, but then this section over here would completely lie about it all just so they could get bacon, okay? So here's, here's the poll, all right? Um, number one. I always eat what's healthy for my body, not because it tastes good or when I want it, but in harmony with what's best for my physical body. (laughs) It's like, okay, we're pretty much all out. Um, Number two, I always sleep the right amount and get enough rest for the next day. Number three, I always save money first instead of spending on what I want in the moment so that I have plenty when the time comes that I need it. Number four, I exercise my body daily, not just so that I can check the box and I never skip leg day. And, uh, and number five, I am always happy, always confident, always peaceful, always patient. 
seeing no hands, we'll move on to the next point, right? We can't. We can't. All right? Society's bad about this. Um, statistically, in America, as of two years ago, 72% of Americans are overweight. Ouch. That hurts. 79% of Americans don't have enough savings to retire when it comes time. 31% of our population is dealing with major anxiety that prevents them from doing the things that they need to do in their life. If we look at humanity guiding the big things of humanity, it's not going so well. And the truth is, write this down, the truth is you can't even rule yourself, much less control the bigger things in life. And what happens is the burden of self-reliance, the need to be in control, it forces you to carry around the outcome of stuff that you actually can't control at all. But you're trying really hard to do it. And it's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's too much for you to handle. And maybe you've been in this spot, maybe you've been in this place like I have where life is causing you trouble and you're like, I'll figure something out. I don't know how, but I'll make it work. I'll stay up extra. I'll work a second job. I'll stay up all night and figure something. I'll build something. I'll go buy something. I'll take out an extra loan for something. Somehow or another, I will make it work by sheer willpower. And not only is that exhausting, but most of the time, you can't make it work by sheer willpower. I have something better for you. God has something better for you. Write this down in your notes. Peace comes when you trade self-reliance for self-control. Peace in your life comes when you trade this need to be in charge of everything, this need to be the one guiding your path, when you trade that for self-control to guide yourself and to allow God to handle the big stuff in life because you weren't designed for this stuff we've been looking at psalm 23 the bible edition not uh, max's edition uh, and it starts like this the lord that's yahweh and we talked about that last week if you missed last week this this word for the lord it means i am the personal god the consistent god the god who is with me through every situation he is my shepherd. He's the one who's guiding me through this life. He's the one who says, if you'll follow me, I've got a much lighter thing. I'll give you my light burden and I'll handle the heavy stuff. The Lord is my shepherd and he wants, he wants you to be able to hold on to the light stuff. But if you follow this, if you reason through this, you probably get to where I am. If he is the shepherd in the story, then what does that make you? <laughs> Sheep. Okay? I can think of a lot of animals from Animal Planet that I would rather be than a sheep. Sheep makes me think of this wonderful moment from Cars. Do we have that to put up on the screens here? Right? Tractors are so dumb. Right? Sheep are not exciting animals to be compared to they're not especially smart they stink they bite they wander off aimlessly if you okay if you don't manage sheep in the rain it they will at times look up at the rain and the rain will fall into their nostrils and they suffocate they're dumb i don't want to be a sheep i want to be in charge Okay, so we read the original design. God says, I made all of the stuff in the planet and then I made this special creature that's going to be just like me to be in charge of everything. That doesn't sound like a sheep. It sounds like the psalm should have started, the Lord is my commander in chief and I am his mighty warrior. Okay, who would rather be that? Okay, I just think of like He-Man, I don't need a shirt because I've got all the muscles and like my giant sword. And that, yes. Okay, or... Or the Lord is my CEO and I am his all-star sales manager. I could go for that. All right? You know, it's, and it's not just guys, right, ladies? The Lord is my director and I am his star actress. 
Okay? I am the pinnacle of this. I make this stuff happen. It's not any of those things. It's sheep. You're a sheep. Everybody go, bah. Yeah, that's like, I feel dumb even doing that. And I don't want to be a sheep. Okay? But if you don't live life like a sheep and let him be the shepherd, you don't get this. You can't have the, he- the light stuff. You have to carry the heavy stuff. It's like the difference between a foreman and a bricklayer. Okay. The foreman of the house is responsible. The foreman of the project is responsible for all of the details. Got to make sure I have this person at this time. Got to make sure I get the best market prices on these pieces. Got to make the buyer happy. Got to make the subcontractors happy. Got to coordinate this and organize this and do this and hire this and fire this. The bricklayer shows up and puts mortar on a brick and sticks it on, puts mortar on a brick and sticks it on, puts mortar on a brick and sticks it on, and then he goes home. Okay? It's kind of a dull job. But at the end of the day, when the foreman lays down and closes his eyes and the bricklayer lays down and closes his eyes, one of them has a really easy time leaving work at work and falling asleep in peace. And one of them is up all night trying to figure stuff out. And if you want to be in charge of everything, you have to carry that weight of having to figure stuff out. Trust me, I know, okay? I'm the lead pastor of this church. I'm the chairman of the board of this church. There are a lot of decisions that weigh on my mind. There are things that I would love to be able to kick that down and say, ha ha, you get to decide that. I used to be that guy. When I was the associate pastor, I made a lot of decisions. And then the big stuff, I'm like, ah, well, you'll have to talk to Pastor Roy about that one. Whew. Okay, now I throw that and it just comes like a boomerang right back to my desk. There's peace, don't miss it. There's, there's peace when you don't have to be responsible for every detail. You don't have to be responsible for how things are going to plan out. You don't have to be responsible for looking into the future and preparing for every possible scenario. There's peace whenever you're following someone and he says, I'll have the fix for the scenario when we get there. You just follow and chill, bro. There's peace there. Okay, write this down in your notes. When you try to change things beyond your control, you get worn out. It's exhausting. You can't keep up that pace. Job 42 is this this really neat passage where a lot of bad stuff happens to this guy. And he eventually starts shaking his fist up at the sky and saying, God, you're, you're unjust. You're a jerk. How could you do this to me? And God takes a couple of chapters to put him in his place and say, I'm sorry. Where were you when I created the earth? Oh, that's right. You didn't exist yet. So why don't you just go sit down and I'll handle the God stuff and you just be a human for a minute. It's, if you ever want to see God be a little bit sassy, it's, there are a couple chapters in Job. Okay, So he gets put in his place in Job 42. Verse 1 through 3, Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. You asked, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It's I. And I was talking, listen to what he says, I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things that were far too wonderful for me. He realizes, whoops, I was talking out my rear end. I'm sorry, Lord, I take it all back. You're God, I'm not. I'll let you be in charge of stuff. His shoulders are heavy enough to carry that. You weren't designed to handle everything. And here's what you need to do. If you find yourself, like I am so many times, I keep grabbing the luggage, I'll be in charge, I'll figure it out, I'll make a way, put all the stuff on me, I'll make the decisions. If that's you, then here's what you need to do. And I know you don't want to be a sheep, but it makes me think of this moment in like 17 different Star Trek episodes and probably a couple of the movies. Any Trekkies in the room? Any Star Trek? Not really? Couple, okay. Couple, couple Trekkies, All right? They always seem to have this moment. I think other, other things probably had it. Do you have that up for the screens? Are we, okay, right? Where, where they say, divert all power to the shields, Okay, because uh, I have all of this power and I was using it for the engines, but the Romulans are about to shoot photon torpedoes at me. So I'm speaking somebody's love language right now. And they're like, this pastor's cool. Okay, yes, two of you think I'm cooler now. Anyway, 
I misjudged the crowd. Uh, but they have this deal, all right? And they, they, they say, all right, I need to redirect the power a different way. This is not a, a wimpy, I'm just flying uh, like a jellyfish through the ocean deal. Write this down. It takes the strength of humility to follow like a sheep. Because, don't miss the connectivity, because you were designed as a leader, because God built this planet and said, the pinnacle of all of my creation is mankind, and I put honor on them. They're one step below me, and they, they rule the earth in my stead. Because you have that nature in you, it takes a lot of strength to choose humility and to follow like a sheep and just say, I'll wait until he tells me to turn left or right. I'm just walking. I'm not thinking about the other stuff and I'm not trying to change the big things in life. That's hard. But that's where the peace comes. Listen to what Jesus says in uh, Luke chapter 12. Luke 12, 25, he said, Which of you by worrying can add one hour to his lifespan? All of the stress, all of the strain, all of the, I have to find a way, I'll try to figure it out, I'll try to get, Jesus says, guys, all of your effort won't change a lick of any of this stuff that's too big for you. Verse 26, if you're not even able to do a very little thing such as that, why are you worried about the rest? Verse 31, he says, but strive for and actively seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. Now, what does that mean? Seek God's kingdom. It means that you invest your energy instead, okay? And this is a redirect of strength, okay? So, like, independent women in the room, this is not just shut your mouth and go back to the kitchen. This is not that. This is saying this takes a lot of effort and strength to choose something that's difficult, okay? powerful young men and leaders in the room this is this is saying i'm going to take all of my strength to walk against the river current and to walk upstream because that's what god has put in front of me to do jesus said if you seek god's kingdom if you seek in your life this function where he's the king and you are the subject okay it's not i need more church people that's not what seeking god's kingdom means seeking god's kingdom starts with you being a subject and him being king inside of you and Jesus said guys if you will put your strength there if you will put a hundred percent of your effort there and push back against the, the desire to take control if you will push against that and say all of my strength all of my effort is Lord I serve you he said there's a great deal you get to put down the heavy stuff and all the things you can't fix anyway I'll give you this light burden. All of these things that you can't affect with all of your strength, I'm taking care of you. I'm looking out for you. And I've got it, man. Let me have it. It's a much better deal. It's just hard. And a lot of you guys, what we're talking about today, you kind of already know that. It's just hard to do it. And the reason it's hard is because no matter how much you want God's help, it's just a challenge to hand the keys over and be a passenger. Watch this. Several years ago, I went to sell an old minivan that I had and I put it on Facebook Marketplace. Had a meetup scheduled with the potential buyer, but we had to do it after he got off of work. And it had been snowing all day. So the roads were not only dark and snowy, they were starting to get icy. We drove it through town and he wanted to see how it would handle on the highway. So we went out to the interstate, got it up the highway speeds and everything checked out. Old van, but it still runs fine. The sale was looking good until I pointed out, hey, up here in a quarter mile is the place to exit so that we can head back home. And he was too late to get to the on-ramp, but he tried to do it anyway. So he swerved suddenly. And as you could imagine, a sudden swerve in an old minivan at highway speeds, on the ice, it doesn't go so well. The van was immediately skidding out of control, started spinning around the wrong way, and we happened to be on a high overpass, 
looking down a long, steep slope with a frozen lake at the bottom of it. It's amazing how many thoughts can go through your mind in a split second. I was thinking things like, is my seatbelt tight enough? Uh, should I crouch down or should I go limp? All of these thoughts were running through my mind, but there was one thought in particular that was the most terrifying to me. And it wasn't how fast we were going. It wasn't how slippery the roads were. The thought that scared me the most was the realization I was completely out of control in that situation. I didn't have the wheel in my hands. I was just along for the ride. And whatever was going to happen was going to happen and I couldn't do anything to stop it. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you know what it's like to feel the terror of having something serious that's out of your control. Maybe you have grown children and even though you taught them better, you've seen them make poor decision after poor decision and you're watching their life slowly descend into chaos or walk away from their faith in God. Maybe you've got a problem in your body that's only getting worse and there's really nothing that the doctors can do to fix it and there's no telling how bad things could get. Maybe you've been watching the level of inflation go up while your level of income stays the same and you can do the math and you realize soon there's going to be more month than money. One of the scariest things in life is having things go on that affect you deeply and not being able to control the outcome. And that's the problem with self-reliance. If it all depends on you, if it all depends on you to fix things and you can't fix them, the system gets broken and you end up not only exhausted, but full of anxiety and fear. That's why I'm glad that I have a shepherd who leads me. And if you have a shepherd who's leading you, there's something important you need to take away from today's talk. I want you to write this down. I want you to think about this. I want you to chew on this. And you've got to decide whether you believe this is true or not. Out of your control does not mean out of control. See, that's the difference. If you're basing your life around self-reliance, out of your control is out of control. But if there's a shepherd who's guiding you through life, if there's someone who's looking out for you, if there's someone who's saying, turn here, walk here, I'm ahead of you and I'm ready for what's next, then out of your control doesn't mean the situation is out of control. The decision you have to make is whether or not you trust your shepherd. I know it's hard sometimes to draw that line. What are the things I can affect? What are the things that I can't? And when I think about that, it reminds me of the serenity prayer. I'm going to read it. I'm going to pray it. But I don't just want you to listen wherever you're at, in the room or at home. I want you to pray it with me out loud. I want you to hear the sound of this coming from your own vocal cords. I want you to decide to make this your request of God, because if you get this, my friend, if you can figure this out, if you can get just one step better at this, it will make so much of a difference in how heavy the burden is that you carry through life. Let's pray this together. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as a pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever and ever in the next. The way to the world it's too heavy for your shoulders, and you know it. Stop trying to change your life. Stop trying to control things you can't control. Leave the big stuff to Him. Focus your energy on following, and you'll be able to travel through this unpredictable life, traveling light. Hey, this is Pastor Chris again. Thanks for listening. If today's talk was helpful in your spiritual life, odds are there's someone you know who could benefit from it. Take a minute right now to share it with them. And if you live in the area, 
come try out a service in person because church is more fun with friends. See you next time.